This is going to be the fastest three quick questions with a professional I've ever done in my entire life. I happened to come up to New Jersey yesterday to visit my daughter and along the way, I taught a lesson here in Virginia. When I pulled in, I realized of all people in the whole wide world, it was Lainey Ashker's farm. Well, I was teaching in Lainey Ashker's ring. She leases the top part of this property. And I couldn't, must, she was teaching, and I couldn't muster the courage to come in and bother her to ask her to do three quick questions. So when I got to New Jersey last night, Lauren Shumley was like, girl, call her and get it done. So I told her I'd be here at 3.30. <laughs> She needed to leave by like 3.30 and it is currently 4.17 so she's been waiting on mile, me. Turn right onto River Road. It's good, it's fine. It's, I told her we're running in high by, it's gonna be great. Fastest three quick questions with a professional ever <laughs> because I'm an hour and a half late and she's doing this as a favor to Lauren Shumley, I swear to God. This is, as most of you all know from any of my videos, like the pinnacle interview for me. So, I'm, but I don't have time to cry because she has to go. Oh my God. <laughs> this is Lainey Ashker. Hey guys. You're most known in my my mind as an inventor, correct? Yes, correct. Um, and then in the past, what, five years or so? Yeah. You've really kind of gone into dressage. Yeah. And obviously there's dressage and eventing, but she's like grown pre dressage. Yeah. You have just dressage for it. Like horses that do just dressage. I have horses that, I have eventing horses and dressage horses. Yeah, I'm very blessed. And you have your bronze, silver, and gold? I do. Why have you, focus so hard on being actually just dressage, actual dressage. I mean, you do dressage, but it's about what, third level in, in the highest event? Yes, yeah, it's like, it's like would be an easy fourth level, you know, high third right. level. So dressage is obviously very important in the eventing world, um, especially as it has become so technical um, and filled with warm bloods. Uh, and actually about 17 years ago, I back when Craigslist was a thing, um, I had an owner, which is my only owner and my best owner, and Ann Wilson, um, contact me for lessons. Okay. And um, she had this little uh, Spanish horse that was partly at Appaloosa, and she said she needed me to come ride it, and she also had a horse she wanted to take lessons on. And 17 years later, she's owned about three horses for me, and um, now we currently have um, my ride Zeppelin. The chestnut. Um, yeah, the chestnut. We, we, we have videos of you on our vlogs from Devin. Yeah. He's, when you were talking with George. That's Williams. right. Yeah, okay. yeah. So he's fantastic, and he's, we've had him since a four-year-old. We brought him over from Germany. Um, Regatta, Agata Rakuka found him um, and sourced him for me. So he's been a really great horse. But the biggest thing about Pure Dressage is it helps so much for the eventing world. So now granted, you're on totally different horses in the eventing world. You're on fit horses that are ready to run and gallop and jump. Um, but the technicality, uh, the tests are just easier just because they're a lower degree of level. So it helps me to break them down and to picture them. So when I go in and do a Grand Prix test, you know, the amount of one, the amount of um, mental, yes, the amount of mental capacity you need for a Grand Prix test is similar to running around an advanced cross country course, right? And so it just really helps my bandwidth of my brain work. And uh, like I said, it's just been really helpful for the technicality and the eventing and upping the pay grade with the with the horses there. So yeah. Well, we love having you. Thank you. I, I like I being love following you. I like the outfits too. Right. Well, <laughs> speaking of which, that's a perfect segue. You are always dressed to the nines, and you are always turned out. Uh, and I, I actually said in my my video that I'll, I will we'll be up by the time this goes up. That I was so thankful you weren't available. Well, you probably were, but I wasn't available to ask you for this interview yesterday because I looked haggard. I just happen to be good lighting right now. And I mean, even Chumley, because Chumley said that you're gonna help her with the quarter marks. Yes. So yeah. you have YouTube videos of your quarter marks because yep. you're always turned yeah. out. Uh, braiding you yeah. do you're always turned out for the FEI jogs yeah. she's like gorgeous <laughs> but you have like uh, tan uh, shad belly oh, yeah. that. why are you always so inspired to be per like beautifully turned out well I can't I can't blame that on uh, the dressage world because I've always been that way even in eventing so oh, I've okay. always enjoyed the matchy matchy so that's probably I was destined to be a dressage rider um, listen I I'm a huge believer in in self-respect so it, being turned out um, to the best, um, being turned out, I feel like people respect you. I feel like it's respect for the judges. It's respect for my owner that's put in so much money to my, for my horse to be there. Um, and there's respect for myself. I, if I, even whether I'm the winner or not, I want to present myself like I am the winner. That's so a Rihanna statement. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's honestly that's what it is, and I it, I take a lot of pride in, in what my horse looks like and what I'm, what I'm presenting to the judges, and really even in eventing all three phases. You know, I have quarter marks for show jumping and cross country as well, and 
um, you know, my colors and eventing are the Star Spangled Banner, red, white, and blue, and so everything is decked out to that. But yeah, it's just more of a respect thing. It's um, and it's not just respect for myself. It's respect for everything that goes on, even the volunteers that you know are there volunteering their time to be there. Whether it's jump judges, you know, I I just think that uh, putting on a good presentation shows respect for yourself, your time, and other people respect you for that and also feel respected. So. It's also something you can do and learn to do while your horses are down. It costs no money. It costs no it money. It costs no money. And like it's pouring down rain right now. If you don't have an indoor, you can practice yes, the quarter marks. And absolutely, things. yeah. So the the tough question I've been delaying this interview for you you took a horrific fall. I did. I yeah. Thought, what 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 role is the Rolex? Correct. Um, and devastating, life changing, career altering. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I know you got hurt really bad. I know there was more to the story. Mm -hmm. How do you even come back mentally, emotionally? The struggle. Um. Yeah. It's it is a struggle. i I've, I've always struggled with um you know, mental health in regards to, I, I hate to say the word, I feel like anxiety can be a plug word for anything. Most but, of my followers feel anxi anxiety okay. all the time. That's why this question was so, it's so yeah. harsh for you. I'm sorry, yeah, but it's so I mean, important. It's, I've actually worked through it um, uh, on my own. And honestly, the horses have helped me work through it. Work through it. I'll never be over it and I've always learned from it. But, um, you know, at growing up um, in this sport in where you've got to be really tough, you know, it's, you don't really want to admit when things are, things are, like, I hate to even admit that I'm nervous before a cross country course. I hate it. And I, just the past couple of years, I've been able to admit, oh, this course makes me nervous or oh, I'm there. I was nervous for my dressage. I generally don't get nervous for the dressage just because, um, and that's just being totally real. Um, because I, I don't feel like I'm going to die. Objects <laughs> that can, Although I have broken a bone doing it. Um, um, last year you had your whole face like plastered. Yes, that, that was, was a bird. Thing. That was a bird that, though, wasn't it? No, I um, I had a fall cross country school. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm sick. So, um, <laughs> oh, but that's it, right. It, yeah. Yeah. That. yeah, yeah okay. So, but and I got back on, but you know, that's kind of the, the sport of eventing. The culture of eventing is to be really tough. Um, and there's, people are now sort of, there's power in admitting when, um, you know, not only that you're wrong, but that you're, there might, something has given you trepidation. Um, and so that specifically for me, um, go after the event, well, really before the event, I was kind of worried about saying whether I was nervous about an offense or something. But, um, after I was hurt in 2008, um, you know, and I took my time, I took my own timeline coming back. I, I didn't give any interviews for over a year. I just wanted it to be on my own, but I also found a lot of, um, rehab in putting out my feelings on social media. You and do a great social media. Thank you. And that's, I love watching your social media, everything on social thank media. You. And, and people really, it resonated with people yeah. because they're like, oh my God, finally someone that's a professional that's saying something makes them nervous or they didn't like their ride and this was why. And um, kind of working through that on social media, talking to you guys, talking to you, um, really kind of helps me too. So um, yeah, the, the accident, how did I overcome it? I overcome it, I overcame that accident, which everybody overcomes their accidents by just showing up every day. So um, I always tell people that have had a bad fall, uh, not to rush yourself to get back to it, right? Like I think it's important that you do pick yourself up off the ground and if you're not having a you know a life altering experience then you should get back on the horse but you don't necessarily have to go and tackle the same thing you know at that same height or that same level that you were doing it's all about it takes one second to lose confidence and it takes about a year to gain it right with so, the horses too right exactly yeah. so it's really important that you take things slowly and i, I definitely did that um I wanted to be back at Kentucky that following year. It wasn't the right thing for myself. My horse was ready, he was qualified, but I wasn't ready mentally. So I took the time and I took a full two years. My accident was in 2008, I came back in 2010 and I was I was the top 10 in Kentucky and I was glad I took that time. Um, but still even to this day, what people think about me, um, you know, what all those things, I would be lying if I said none of that matters. I've just Oh, it matters to all of us. Yeah, so Every I just learned more coping, spill, uh, coping skills on how to deal with that. Um, and honestly, the, the best therapists have been the horses, right? right? And I, I got great coaches. I've got really supportive coaches that hold me accountable, but don't aren't toxic. And um, I've always been blessed with great coaches growing up. So, um, and my current coaches are, are no slack. So um, yeah, I have just showing up. I can't say enough about just showing up and putting your best out there and not over facing yourself. Not um, over facing, like take, take yourself, yeah, right? Right. Well, you're right. Yeah. Perfect. So that, that has been, that's my biggest, uh, 
thing to coming back and now I've got great horses and great owners and great coaches so I'm, I'm lucky with where I am well I, I thank you so much for, for coming back and sharing it all with yeah us. absolutely you are hashtag LAE yes. on everything yes. you're on Instagram with a D now for dressage but yeah. oh okay um you're on Instagram yes uh, you have on Instagram you have a su subscription uh, yes, I, I don't, I'm not, you guys don't have to do that because we're kind of phasing out of that. Because okay. I just kind of like to give people free information that I would want to yeah. know. Um, but yeah, so I, I do have a subscription, but that's not necessary. Basically, I share everything um, on my Instagram, my Facebook. Um, I think I've got a TikTok. I don't personally handle you my do TikTok. Have a TikTok. It's, it's only a few videos. Yes, I've okay. got a very good social media gal that handles that. I'm just not, I, I think it's, I'm 40 years old now, so it's a little bit like beyond my time so, to do TikTok. So. She's 40. Yes. So am I. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, some of us take care of ourselves better than <laughs> Hardly, hardly. I don't know. I've got, I've had lip cancer. I break my bones all the time. It's just, you know. I'm just here to show up. So. Well, we thank you so much. And thank yeah. you for waiting for me. And, and best safe travels because she's literally leaving right now. Yeah, so I'm going to go pick up my Magnolia. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Lainey Absolutely. Asher, everyone. Thank you. I cannot thank Lainey enough for waiting for me and doing the interview for me and with me. And I can't thank Lauren Chumley enough for telling me I needed to buck up. Uh, when I told someone that I came here yesterday... By the way, I showed up here yesterday to teach a, a student, an online student down there. And um, don't tell Lainey. Don't tell Lainey that Lonnie, Lottie and I are bonding. Um, and I pulled in and I was like in tears. And I was like, oh my God, I'm at Lainey Ashker's farm. So I taught the lesson there. And Lainey Ashker's just right now. And she was teaching and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't muster the courage. And the last question obviously was emotional. And... I told her, I was like, you do what you want to. You're welcome to Google. Um, Lainey's got an incredible resume and the accident is, I think, Googleable. Um, and obviously she has recovered and runs a thriving business. Very successful, very kind uh, to all, I see her shows fairly regularly. And she's always so kind to all show management, volunteers and staff. And do you want to come home with me, do you think? Tell your mom. So I, I really, I genuinely, I'm kind of shocked that all happened actually, because if you've watched any of my uh, prior vlogs on TikTok or possibly even YouTube, you know that she's she's been the one I have wanted to interview since this all started. Like it's written when I do my lives, it's written on my bulletin board behind me at home. So. I, I thank her for fulfilling that dream and now I have a, a drive home. Say bye. Say bye. If you like this, please like, subscribe, and follow. There will be more Three Quick Questions with a Professional. As always, thank you so much.